When it comes to coffee, I'm ambidextrous. Check this out. Uh-oh. What? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What? Mmm. The sweet nectar of life. Get in my belly. Yep, that's it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Eating my burrito breakfast. Oh, man. I'm telling you, man. It's literally eggs, Mexican cheese, hot sauce, in a corn tortilla. What can go wrong from that? So no matter what you do, you got to have your priorities straight in life. You know, for some people, it's kind of like core, God, country, family. Uh, for me, it's hot sauce, guitar, working out, hot sauce. <sighs> What's going on today, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to 2022. Uh, I thought it'd be fun to do a quick home tour. Uh, you know, studio tour to see what I got going on here for all you guys that are kind of new out there uh, as well as I am to content creation. Uh, I'm going to show you all my video gear as well as my computer setup, what I use to make the videos, record music, and I'll uh, show you all my behind the scenes guitar gear as well and amps, all that good stuff. So uh, without further ado, let's just get into it, guys. Let's go. Okay, guys. So uh, first and foremost, most important in the home studio is the mini bar setup. And uh, yeah, a lot of you have made comments about, you know, the bottles in the background, I like a drink now and then. It just, uh, you know, I like the atmosphere of the bottles. That's kind of the look I'm going for. All right, so first up, we've got all my pedals up here on the counter. Um, these are just up here because I'm actually going to be doing a demo of these pretty soon. I haven't really, I'm not much of a pedal guy, so I haven't really used these too much. Uh, as you can tell, these are mostly distortion and overdrive pedals, right? Uh, over here, this one's really cool. This is the Atomic Amplifier Box Mark II, second version. Uh, that's really like an amp modeler pedal all in one little pedal platform. That's really nice. And of course, to drive all this, I've got the uh, Seymour Duncan Power Stage 200, which is the upgrade to the uh, Power Stage 170. That is more than enough power to get you going for live gigs and stuff and small venues. Uh, pretty cool there. And, you know, this is the background. This is what you guys see when I'm sitting at the desk. And uh, still got the mini Christmas tree up, you know. I like the ambiance. I know Christmas is over, but uh, it looks cool. So this is what you guys see. Take it or leave it, I guess, right? Sorry about that. But uh, home studios being what they are, you know, you got to deal, you got to work with what you got. So down here, this thing, this little piece of furniture is kind of like my little catch-all for uh, basically everything, man. Tools, uh, whatever, you know, everything and anything guitar-related, music-related, it's all in here. Right here, I've got my little guitar tool kit. We did a video on that one before. Uh, I'll leave a card and a uh, link in the description below so you can check out that video if you want to. You know, just basically all this stuff is just whatever you might need, you know, at a moment's notice, it's right there. It's pretty good. I like. I got this little shelving unit, by the way, at Bed Bath & Beyond. It was really cheap, so uh, get one, you know? It works. It helps. And of course, most importantly, Grogu, the child. Pretty awesome. Darth Vader. Oh, hola. Got your CD, buddy. Thanks, it's awesome. And then down here in these bins, like this bin for instance, I keep all my, well you can't see, but it's all my lenses and batteries and all that stuff, video related. Um, and here I've got headsets, I've got extra microphones back there. You know, I've got a Shure SM58, I've got a 57, uh, some cords and stuff like that, whatever. Just pretty much extra stuff that you accumulate over the years. Um, got some tools in here, what do I have? These, uh, fretboard radius measurement tools stuff like that tons of picks that you'll never use right i mean from like everywhere just every type of pick imaginable i got it down here i've got another little compartment for uh, extra cables and such i like to keep everything compartmentalized nice closed containers it keeps it dust free and all in one place you can't lose it you know and then of course this bin is more guitar cables all sorts of cables and cords and lights and whatever battery packs but yeah so like i said this is a, that's my catch-all for pretty much 
everything I need to record uh, video and to do stuff on the computer. So real quick, I thought I'd give you guys a little snippet of what I'm working on for you, something new. I uh, hope you like it, check it out. guys the uh, 27 inch iMac 2020 iMac got it pretty well specced out with uh, 64 gigs of RAM aftermarket RAM does a great job okay I decided to go with the Yamaha HS 7s um, I felt that those were really a good value for the money um, very flat response from what I can tell I thought that the fives would be too small and that the eights would have too much bass and just take up too much real estate. I really don't need that much bass or that huge of a speaker uh, in this environment here on the small table. They work well. You know, my references are pretty good as far as I can tell. Pretty happy with that. Uh, down here, I've got the, uh, the Scarlet 2i2 uh, Gen 2, Generation 2. So it doesn't have that little air button on it, but that's okay. It works pretty well. At some point in the future, I do want to upgrade that. I'm looking at getting something like the... Uh, Apogee Symphony, something one of those, um, but you know, $1,300, so that will have to come later. And then my main reference headphones are these Audio Technicas. Uh, those work pretty well. I like those a lot. I've also got a set of Beats, and I also reference with uh, regular AirPods and some other earbuds. You know, you want to get a good sense of what uh, the consumer is going to be listening to with your music. You know, how are they going to consume your music? How are they going to listen to it? So just the monitors alone isn't really good enough. You need a couple reference points. And then back here, uh, my main tripod, I got this on Amazon, ESDDI, I don't know what that stands for, but it's really good, it's a good value, it wasn't too expensive, it's solid, it works well. And then back here, I've got a uh, typical mic boom stand, but I'm actually using it, for, using it for my shotgun mic, and I just have a long cord running from the microphone, there's a the cord going to my camera. And then I've got these lighting set up, which I also got on Amazon. These were really, really uh, inexpensive. And I'm gonna tell you guys this one time. The first time you're purchasing some new item like I did here with these lights, uh, don't skimp out, don't go for the cheapest thing because guess what, the quality sucks. These things, there's no adjustments to be made. It's one, it's one brightness level, you know, it's one Kelvin temperature, that's all you can do with it. So you're stuck with it. Uh, they work well though. It was a three-piece kit, three lights for like $64. I mean, can you really go wrong? Not really. Well, maybe you can. I don't know. All right, these are the mics that I use generally. These are all the mics that I have actually. So I've got an SM57, mic and cabinets there. Uh, SM58, that's your typical workhorse vocal mic. And then another uh, vocal mic, you know, can also use this to record guitar. Uh, Sennheiser XS1, that was uh, also given to me but uh, I'm gonna utilize it, so there's my mics. That's your basic collection right there. So basically, when I'm sitting at the desk working on whatever, music, video, editing, whatever, the TV's right there, you know, so I can watch the news, listen to a movie in the background, you know, when the video editing gets a little, uh, well, you get tired of it, right, after a while. Down here, nice little feature. Got some classic records here. The Beatles. Guys, if you don't know about the Beatles, Look it up, listen to them, it is worth it. Abbey Road, all this good stuff. Some Rolling Stones, Charlie Watt there, right in the front. Unfortunately, we lost him with this past year. And that's Jose Feliciano, uh, don't ask, I don't even know why I have that. The Birds, I recently acquired these records from somebody else, but I am happy to have them, add them to my collection. Uh, Bob Dylan, classic rock is great, man. Eric Clapton with The Cream, right? Stephen Stills from Crosby, Stills & Nash. And there they are. That's a classic, great album. If you guys like folk music or indie pop, you know, you're younger gener generation people, but you're into that kind of stuff, you got to check out Crosby, Stills & Nash. You're going to love it. All right, then moving on. So this is my collection of amps and cabinets here. Um, what I use when I just want to kind of plug in and jam real quick, you know, for a little while, and ease of... Ease of access is basically this Line 6 
Yeah, Glenn, I know. Line 6 spiders suck. Whatever. Don't judge. It gets pretty decent sounds. And if you crank it up to that insane setting there, you're going to get the most gain out of it. Pretty good tones for jamming in the house. I like it. They work for me. In fact, you guys have heard some of these tones, not even known it, on some of my previous videos. Some of my shorter clips and stuff. I've actually been using tones from that amp. And then over here, I've got the... Uh, I recently acquired this cabinet down here, the Mesa 212 Recto. That's the regular size one, not the compact one. Haven't really used it much yet, it's just a handful of times. But it sounds great, it's got a lot of bass response to it. Man, the thing is really awesome. And behind that I've got the Marshall 412 1960 cabinet, slant cab. I've had that since about 92. That thing is a classic, I'll never get rid of it. And above that is my rack gear, guys. This is what people used to use before amp sims. And somewhere after pedals, until pe pedals became back in vogue, uh, all throughout the 90s and early 2000s, it was all rack gear, guys. So check this out. Up on top, we've got the Furman power conditioner. That gives you a nice, stable voltage flow from the wall to your uh, all the devices plugged into the back of it. And just below that, I've got the TC Electronic G Major. That is the effects processor in that unit there. Below that is the ADA MP2. Not the MP1, the MP2 was the second iteration of that. And that thing is sick. It's got two uh, 12 AX7s instead of one. It's got more channels, it's got more features. It's really awesome. And then finally, my power amp is this PV Classic Series 120 120. This has got to be the heaviest power amp you have ever lifted in your entire life. This thing literally weighs at least 50 or 60 pounds. It's got, I don't know, 13, 16 tubes in it. Um, it's just so heavy, it's insane. And it puts out way more power than I would ever need. So, you know, still have it. I just don't ever want to get rid of it because it's a classic. Up on top, what do we have? A little lamp at night, a little lantern. And then, guys, you got to get a little tray, tray for your picks. You know, this thing is perfect. My sister gave me that. It's a little piece of art, a little piece of pottery. Throw all your picks in there all in one place so they're not hanging all over the place. And uh, you'll be happy you did that, you know. Oh, my God. Cassette tapes. Do you guys remember cassette tapes? I've got some old demo tracks on there, really old, that I wanted to kind of hear and see if I could relearn some old parts that I wrote. So, yeah, maybe that'll be a video. Who knows? Moving on to the good stuff. Here we go. This is, I unofficially call this the Riff Room. Uh, yeah, it's a stupid name, I know, but uh, here's where I keep all my guitars. You guys have seen most of these on the channel so far. I say most, not all. But, uh, yeah, th this is most of them right here. Um, there's a couple not here right now. But, yeah. Too many guitars? Not enough? What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Should I do an expose kind of on each one of these? Maybe we'll do a video where I kind of go over each and every one or maybe my top three or top five favorites. And I do have a bass. I picked this up earlier this year, back in the summer. So there it is, guys. All the guitars. Most of my guitars. Uh, you guys have seen most of these. I've got two new guitars, quote unquote new, new to me which I'm going to be de demoing pretty soon on the channel. That'll be pretty cool. Anyways, yeah, this is pretty cool, man. I don't know where else to put the guitars right now until I move and get a real studio setting or studio room area. This is where they stay. This is where they be. And then I've got the acoustic guitar, which I've really only shown on the channel one time so far. I've got a nice tailor there. We're going to bust that out soon and start using that and make some music with it. So that'll be fun. So yeah, there you go. Guitars, lots of them. The last thing I want to show you guys is my uh, camera setup here, my camera rig. So I'm running the uh, Canon M6 Mark II, and uh, I've got two lenses here. I've got the uh, the Canon 11 to 22, and then my kind of wide angle is the um, Sigma 16 millimeter lens. That thing is a workhorse. It's really great. I should turn it on so you can see it. But that thing is really a great lens. Here's my uh, little desktop or kind of countertop tripod. Nice little thing. It gets really small, really low for getting those uh, close-up shots. And then my uh, shotgun mic is just this kind of, it's kind of a 
cheaper budget mic. It's a Deity, uh, relatively inexpensive, but it gets the job done. It's got microphones on both ends, and you can have just the one in front or have one back on both ends active so that, you know, when you're holding the camera, you pick up your voice just as well as the person in front of the camera. So that's the camera rig right there. Yeah, as I was going through the video to edit it, I realized I didn't, I wanted to go in more depth about this, uh, the humidifier here. This is kind of a necessary evil uh, to have around, especially if you've got wood, wooden instruments of any kind, because it helps to maintain the humidity levels, you know, which is necessary, uh, as well as keep your temperature levels right. I mean, you have to have a certain amount of moisture in the air so that your guitars or basses or whatever, violin, whatever you play, um, doesn't warp, you know. The only downside to having a humidifier right next to your instruments is that all the moisture that's in the air has to eventually settle somewhere and it lands on your guitars and it kind of, you know, rust out and corrode your, your strings really quickly. So you'll find that you're going to have to change strings a little more frequently, but that's okay because the upside is your guitars, the wood is maintained. Uh, it needs to be maintained, guys. You know, that's what you got to do. So yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the home tour here. Let me know in the comments, please, what your thoughts are about this place. The space, the gear I use, uh, the amps or lack thereof that I have, and of course, all of my guitars. I've got too many, but never enough, right? So, Home Studio Tour 2022. It's been a lot of fun, guys, checking this one out with you all. Talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Keep on subscribing. Hit the like button. It's not going to cost you a thing. Hit that like button, guys. I'm out of here. I'll talk to you soon. See ya! These egg burritos are the bomb.